Christmas. Welcome to worship at Mount Calvary. We're glad that you have joined us. We give thanks for our worship leaders today, Christy Killalay, Dave Girton, and North Country Girls, Brenda Lund and Mary Patterson. If you missed our Christmas Eve worship services, you can find them on the homepage of our website. Cross Paths begins January 12th. Our Cross Paths Bible study with Pastor Dave will focus on the words and themes of both biblical prophets and contemporary prophets. Register online by January 8th. Your support of the December Giving Trees was amazing. Thank you. Also, thank you to everyone who provided regular offerings and special year-end gifts. We are so grateful for your heartwarming generosity. Now we begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was not a silent night. There was blood on the ground You could hear a woman cry In the alleyway that night On the streets of David's town And the stable was not clean And the cobblestones were cold And little Mary full of grace With the tears upon her face Had no mother's hand to hold It was a labor of pain It was a cold
It was not a silent night On the streets of David's town The Gospel reading from Luke chapter 2 When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to prevent present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeon. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that we will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, a tri- of the tribe of Asher. She was a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Merry Christmas, everyone. Peace on earth, goodwill to all. Long-suffering. What does it mean? Patiently enduring lasting offense or hardship. Simeon and Anna from today's story were long-suffering servants of God, patiently enduring, waiting for a sign from God that salvation was indeed coming. Elizabeth and Zechariah, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, they were all surprised by visits from God. They weren't looking for anything big at all. But Simeon and Anna were long-suffering in their waiting and watching patiently enduring. I heard a story this weekend about the workers in a base camp fighting the wildfires near Fresno, California. The motto of the camp is, quote, hard work, low pay, miserable conditions, and more, unquote. Every day, not just Monday through Friday, every day, RJ and Corey and others untangle hoses. That's it. They go out in the parking lot of a ski resort where they're based, and from sunup till sundown, they lay out tens of thousands of feet of fire hose so that it can be wound, cleaned, and used again. And they'll do that for six, seven, eight months straight. They keep going until the fire's out. Long suffering. But why? Why do RJ and Corey roll fire hose for months on end? Why do Simeon and Anna wait year after year in the temple? Hard work, low pay, miserable conditions, and more. Why? Because they knew they were part of a bigger story. They knew they were contributing to something good and sacred. Every time RJ and Corey saw another truckload of dirty, tangled fire hoses fall on their parking lot, they knew it meant the forest would rise up again. Each time Simeon and Anna fell to their knees in prayer, they knew that one day God would raise up a Savior. 
and so they waited, long-suffering. Falling and rising, that is the order of things. Falling, then rising. And we don't like it, but that is the way of it. Think of Psalm 23. Do you remember the ending? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. But that's the end of the psalm. What's the verse that comes right before it? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We want to skip the death part, the shadow part, the falling part. We want to go right from green pastures and still waters straight to the feast at the end. But we must fall down into the valley before rising out on the other side. Listen again to how Psalm 23 concludes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even after walking through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalm writer trusts, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, both in the falling and in the rising. Even though Simeon has seen God's salvation in the face of Jesus, he tells Mary and Joseph, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many. We look at falling as failure, that losing or being wrong is the worst thing imaginable. But you, my brothers and sisters, you know what Simeon and Anna also know, that falling is never the end of the story because you are part of a bigger story. You are part of something good and sacred. In God's story, falling is followed by rising. The valley of the shadow of death is followed by the feast of victory. The tomb is followed by the resurrection. Simeon and Anna waited because they knew God's salvation was coming. Now here we are in the midst of falling. Maybe you felt like you're in free fall even. And as a nation, as a global family, we are in long suffering. Keeping things going, just like Corey and RJ, doing our best to keep the wildfire of a pandemic from destroying everything. And it's not over yet. And so I want to conclude with a poem from Howard Thurman from the book Conversations with God, Two Centuries of Prayer by African Americans. It's a prayer for a time of falling and long suffering before the future, God's future, where we rise. O oh God, I need thee. I need thy sense of time. Always I have an underlying anxiety about things. Sometimes I am in a hurry to achieve my ends and am completely without patience. It is hard for me to realize that some growth is slow, that all processes are not swift. I cannot always discriminate between what takes time to develop and what can be rushed because my sense of time is dulled. I measure things in terms of happenings Oh, to understand the meaning of perspective that I may do all things with a profound sense of leisure, of time. I need thy sense of order. The confusion of the details of living is sometimes overwhelming. The little things keep getting in my way and providing ready-made excuses for failure to do and be what I know I ought to do and be. Much time is spent on things that are not very important, while significant things are put in an insignificant place in my scheme of order. I must unscramble my affairs so that my life will become order. Oh God, I need thy sense of order. I need thy sense of future. Teach me to know that life is ever on the side of the future. Keep alive in me the forward look, the high hope, the onward surge. Let me not be frozen either by the past or the present. Grant me, O patient Father, 
thy sense of the future, without which all life would sicken and die. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this season of celebration when we gather in person or remotely to celebrate and cherish our families and friends. And while it's a wondrous and exciting season, we often lose sight of what's truly important. Help us to keep our hearts and minds on you and remember that all we have is a blessing from you. Use each of us in this church to spread your good news to others in our community and world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving each one of us and showing us the way, the way set by Jesus' example shown on earth of love and compassion for others, especially to those who most considered less worthy or outsiders. Help us to model his example to all we encounter in the new year, showing love and compassion to all consistently and without reservation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are thankful for all who work tirelessly to keep us safe and healthy during this pandemic. These caregivers are providing tremendous support to others, oftentimes at the expense of their own physical and mental well-being, as well as time with their loved ones. Please grant them the strength to continue onward and grant each of us patience and appreciation for their time talent and dedication to their fellow man. And as production, distribution, and administration of the COVID-19 vaccine continues, we thank you for the people who developed, deliver, and provide this important medicine to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As 2020 comes to an end, we recognize what a difficult year we've all endured. Our friends, family, and community have endured loss, pain, and sadness but we've also seen joy, happiness, and moments small and large that illustrate your abiding love for us. We thank you for always being with us during the bright and carefree days, as well as those days of doubt and darkness. In the new year, we'll see moments of both. Please continue to be with us in all of our days. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with someone today. Now receive the blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.